Hi, I'm Mike. I'm sitting down with uh, uh, Sandro and Tom from the London Software Craftsmanship Group. And uh, Tom, uh, excuse me, Sandro, can you tell us a little bit about uh, London Software Craftsmanship? Sure. Uh, we started about uh, August 2010. Mm -hmm. So basically, it came up with an idea of uh, myself and a friend of mine, Dave Green. So we used to meet just to talk about software and catch up and stuff. And then all of a sudden, we set up. Maybe it would be great if we could have more people coming along and, mm -hmm. and sharing their ideas. Uh, preferably if they come from other languages as well, not Java, right. but uh, other. So, so then, then we, we had this idea of having a group of people that could meet regularly. Mm -hmm. I took this idea to the London Java community and spoke to some of the guys who didn't know anything about craftsmanship, but they loved the idea of having a right. group of people, different professionals coming along and having a chat. And then they said, why don't you create a craftsmanship community then? And they're going to support you as well, because we would love you to attend the meetings. And that's how it started. So that night I went to home, just set up the group and meetup.com, yeah. and, and then we announced our, our first meeting that then. Yeah, that's, that's how and, it uh, and, and, uh, and what, so you went from two people, where, where are you sitting now with, uh, with, the, with typical attendance? Yeah, it, it was a <laughs> bit crazy because like when we started, we didn't know exactly how to start. It's okay, mm -hmm. we want to create this group, to just Dave and myself. So like, what, where do you go from there? And then because we realized that, the people that spoke that we spoke to didn't know anything about craftsmanship. We decided, well, maybe we could give a talk on craftsmanship. Right. If we have like 10, 15 people attending, that would be great. Well, it turned out that we had more than 100 registering yeah. to, to our first talk. <laughs> yeah, 100. Uh, 100. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then we were scared because we never spoken in public before. So, geez, I can't do that. Uh, and and then, so after that, that, that that talk, a lot of people were very inspired in the whole thing, the whole craftsmanship thing. And then we decided to go back to our original idea, that was like having a group of people that meet regularly, mm -hmm. uh, and then we come up with the round table. So today, after just over a year, we have 429 uh, members. We promoted uh, 23 meetings, mm -hmm. and we are growing at a speed of 15 to 20 members per month. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that's about it. Yeah. So you, you've, you've got a monthly meetup, right? That's we have uh, a few things. We we every Wednesday, every second Wednesday of the month, okay. we have our round table uh, meetings that are by far the most popular. It's limited to thirty people. It's okay. a group discussion. People come along. We put topics on the whiteboard. It's like a mini on conference. Mini on conference. Okay. Uh, so we always meet in the same company. We, there is a company where they used to work for that they. It started on the company that I used to work for, so they pay all the pizzas and beers and stuff. Uh, so we have the space uh, after 6.30 to 9.00. Um, so people put the topics, then they explain what they want to discuss. It can be anything related to software developer, from if they want to show a piece of code or they want to discuss architecture or how to do agile and distribute teams around the world, anything. So, and then we vote. The most voted topics we discuss. Sometimes we split in groups. Sometimes we discuss one topic per night. Sometimes we discuss five. Right. So that that's that's the round table. We have uh, every last Wednesday of the month we have a hands-on coding session. Um, that's limited to 40 people. Okay. That's always oversubscribed as well. So we always have people on waiting. And we have some spare uh, sporadic meetings like we have code retreats. We have talks and other stuff. But regular meetings we have two, and very soon we'll have three. Okay, so you, so two round tables a month. No, it's one round table, one, one hands-on session. One round. Okay, all right. And then uh, with the with the extremely large group, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about how it became too much for just two guys to 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 manage. So you, you wanted to spread that out. And that's where Tom comes in with with the associates group. Can you explain a little bit about what the associates, and then maybe Tommy can talk about. What you do in that? So, like, so first, what is the the, the idea of the associates group, and and then I can explain what uh, how it came about. These came from the London uh, the London Java user group because mm -hmm. it has two thousand members today. So it was too much for mm -hmm. just a few people to organize. So they decided to invite some people to that could contribute, but they don't need the they are not fully committed. They, right. they contribute whenever they can. Right. So Tom was always one of our uh, main members, like very active main writer. So yeah. yeah, sure. I'm, um, yeah, I'm one one of the reasons why I'm an associate because 
currently our, our software craftsmanship group is quite heavily sort of Java, mm -hmm. .NET based, literally because of the association to the London Java community and, and other communities. And we don't really have much of a Ruby presence. And so right. I'm one of those Ruby people that I can talk to other Ruby developers. And, okay. and I know other people in the sort of Ruby industry that would be interested. So, so do you have separate meetings for these, like is it, because you said you have a limit of 30 but you have 600 or so registered members, do you have a separate meeting for like at a different location or something like that for, um, for yeah, we, um, associate groups? Yeah, we, we meet up as the sort of associate group. Um, we've only had one meeting so far because we've only okay. done this for one month. Okay. Um, where we literally just sit down, discuss ideas, the sort of the next sort of hands-on sessions that we want to do, who wants to do them, how we can help each other with them, okay. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We also discuss like the the, the, the plans for for the group as a whole, where we are yeah. taking the group, so the whole direction of the group. Because now uh, Dave is is moving to Italy, so it's just me uh, from the regional founders. Right. And so the idea that I brought Thomas, as he said, I want diversity. Because right. Dave and I were Java developers, I want diversity. In yeah. So there is a guy from Android community, Tom from Ruby, and then other two uh, from, from from Java. But I want more diversity in there. Right. So we discuss uh, the things that Tom talk, uh, talked about, but also where are we going as a group? What are our next step in terms of like our mentorship program that we want right. to do, the connections to other communities, like that's what we're doing here. Uh, so that's the things that the associates would be uh, discussing. But as I said, there is a difference between the leadership team and the associates. The associates are, they contribute whenever they can. Right. Loads of right. people, they have great ideas, but they can't commit to the same level like yeah. Dave and myself. Commit. Every month, sometimes many hours a month. Oh, many hours, yeah. yeah. Uh, weeks because like we need to sort out all the venues or all the contacts that's right. that so the idea with the associates is to bring people that want to help but don't want to commit straight away right and as soon as they get they, uh, they start getting more involved then we'll bring them to the leadership team and they will have like uh, like full commitment but they need to see if they want to do that right. first so so that yeah because yeah, I've, I've seen that the problem where sometimes people are saying yes I want to do this and then they get into it a little while and they're like, wow, this is a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And maybe I really am not that passionate about this after all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, it's, uh, it's interesting for me because I, uh, I haven't really worked in a, in a community group mm -hmm. like this before and, or been part in a sort of higher level of it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting the sort of training that you get from just talking to guys like Sandra and David on you know, sort of organization and being able to present as well and, right. and learning all those skills while also helping out in the community. And, yeah, and sort of yeah, it's it's very interesting. I, and, and I also want to introduce you later on to your way high tower. It's a very similar model here in Chicago for the latest Ruby community. Mm -hmm. They have two, uh, two uh, main groups in two different cities. But we can talk about that later. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and people have already seen his interview. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so they know all about what, what he was doing. Um, yeah, no, it's fascinating, and uh, and you, you said you're also working with some other, or you've been in communications, or trying to set up communications with some other user groups that are international, some in, in Paris and Germany and, and Israel. Can you tell us a little bit how you've been working with those groups to help them, or to at least connect and share? Sure, so so when Dave and I, we sat down uh, last August, uh, we finished our first year as a community, so we had a meeting. So okay, we had a, an amazing year, amazing first year. Where do you go from there? So we've done a lot for our community in London. Uh, so we made it a reality. But then we realized that we were not doing much for the craftsmanship movement as a whole. Right. So, so we said we need to, to try to spread that. We need to make craftsmanship flourish, if you like, in other places. So part of our mission was to go to other conferences in other countries and start sharing our experience because they deny we, we couldn't even organize our own birthdays before that, right? <laughs> so we, we, we're not organized of anything. Yeah. So we, we had no idea what we were, we were, what we were doing uh, and how many people would turn up. But we learned a lot uh, in one year in terms of finding venues, sponsors and how to attract members. Uh, so a lot of a lot of people want to, to have a, a local community, but they don't have one. Right. And they are scared to start one because they don't know what to do. Yeah. So that, that was part of our mission. So I ended up going to a craftsmanship conference in Germany. 
uh, and my mission, with the, I started saying, talking about the communities and what we're doing, and they had no community there. And but then after speaking to loads of people, uh, five of them put themselves forward and said, like, we want to learn more. And then I ran an open uh, space, sharing all, everything that we've done. And some people said, oh, no, no, that's lots for me. But a few of them said, oh, I would love to do that. Right. So they got together, they put in the map where they lived in Germany, yeah. so how they could organize <laughs> that themselves. How do we uh, meet in the middle? Exactly. Yeah. So then they asked loads of questions and, and stuff. Certain things will work for them, certain things we probably won't. Uh, and then they decided uh, to, to do it. So there are two communities that just started. One community is starting, so one is in Munich, one is in a city that I never, uh, I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> and there is one in Frankfurt starting on the 3rd of December. They will have their code retreat in the Global Day of Code oh, Retreat. Okay. Yeah. So that would be their kickoff meeting. Uh, it's a great way to kick off. Absolutely. Software Grassroom Group. And so that was Germany, and, and and then because we were tweeting about uh, the whole thing and, and communities and helping uh, people, and and the guys there blogged about, mentioned my name also. So a guy in Paris contacted me. Yeah. So look, I was following the Twitter uh, and stuff. So I would love to do that in Paris. Yeah. Uh, would you help me? So oh, of course. And then we spent a few weeks exchanging emails. I was sharing with him like everything that we've done, how we've done, and so on. And then he invited me over to do a kickoff. Mm -hmm. uh, talk in, in his community, and in the first meeting they had like 55 people turning up, and yeah. now uh, just a month and a half later they have 125 members. I I think these kinds of stories are fascinating. Where you, you have an idea and you just want to sit down and you're like, hey, I'm going to do something fun, and then it just flourishes, and then you know, like a like a flower with pollen, it goes off, and then next thing you know, there's there's seeds of groups forming in other uh, yeah. other areas just because of, of they see you doing something cool and, and then they want to do something cool too. It's it's absolutely uh, uh, amazing when, when you hear things like that. So. Yeah, and there is these guys from, from Israel. There's a great guy called Yuri Lavi. Uh, he runs the Israeli uh, software partnership community. He runs it in a slightly different way than, than we run ours uh, in terms of community thing. But he's doing a great job there. And he has like... Uh, 690 members. I, uh, yeah. It's probably the largest uh, community that I know. That's uh, but they, but he doesn't have uh, the the, the uh, monthly events. It's more like ad hoc events. Okay. But but he's doing really well. He's a great great guy. Uh, yeah. So and then what we've done, we, we set up a, a a Google group. So I invited all the, the community leaders in Europe, mm -hmm. and then we have now our group. It's still picking up a little bit because uh, it's very recent stuff. So so that's where we are today. And then hopefully here in the U.S. we will be meeting people like yourself. Right. You know the other guys and make this connection with the American. Yeah, yeah it, it's it, the, we're we're here at SCA and it's it's great getting to sit down and and meet and talk with so many other youth group leaders. But you know, so we're just gonna go ahead and wrap it up now. Thank you, Sandro, for Thank sitting you very down. Much. Tom, appreciate Thanks. it very much. Cheers. Cheers.